Perfect. Who better than Derek, Pat, Andrew, the wrestling crew? Man, they bout to put an end to y'all careers like a finishing move. They bout to give y'all facts on these cats that's fighting on these mats. Y'all can't see them like John Cena. Even if y'all had 2020 vision, y'all better listen. Pay attention and take notes down and realize that it's not your time now. And watch these three kings take the crown. Hey, hey. Welcome back to Wrestling IQ 101. My name is Andrew, alongside Derek. What's up, guys? And before you do anything, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. And today's special guest is none other than Helen Vale. Hi. Good. So, can you, um, for anyone who doesn't know, can you kind of tell me what made you want to get into wrestling? Uh, it was just me going to my first independent wrestling show. Uh, I met somebody that is uh, who's been around a while at a convention and. He invited me to a wrestling show, and I was just all about it, the gimmick, the character, the acting. Um, I grew up doing a lot of uh, shows and plays, and that was about it. Um, I mean, I really wasn't athletic, but I liked to fight, if that makes sense. Uh, so I kind of really wanted to get into it. It took me a very long time because I ended up uh, dating that person, and I was told no for the longest time. But then I uh, kind of did it because it's hard to go to shows and not be a part of it. It's very hard, so... Where where did you uh, where did you learn how to wrestle? I started off uh, just doing open ring for two months at this place called RWA, and it was kind of whatever whoever showed up would kind of help out. Um, then I went to New England Pro Wrestling Academy, where Brian Ferry teaches. I did that for a few months, and then um, I bounced around because I always wanted to get different views on different teachers and all that stuff. So I've been to CCW, I've been to Russell Pro, I've been to um, where else have I been? Oh my god. Uh, Oh my god, I'm getting like a brain fart right now. This is terrible. Oh, XWA, I've been trained by um, Biff Busick, JT Dunn. Um, so yeah, just pretty much a lot of different people. So what have been some of your people who inspired you, like famous wrestlers? You know? I grew up watching, um, I didn't... I wouldn't say like I was the one tuning in, but um, every time I went to my grandmother's house, my dad's brother um, was always watching wrestling, so I knew who The Rock was. I knew who Stone Cold uh, Stone Cold was. Um, my favorite was Undertaker. We always tried to do that. My mom would always say like Your eyes are gonna get stuck like that if you keep doing that. <laughs> but my all-time favorite is Rey Mysterio, uh, maybe because he's a little Mexican like me. But I really like that lucha stuff, so he's my all-time favorite. But gimmick-wise, it would be The Undertaker. So when you when you got started, um, can you kind of tell us about some of the like obstacles that you've had or challenges and how you overcame those challenges? Uh, I would still say I'm going through a lot of those obstacles. Um, <laughs> I live where I live. There's actually a school there, and um, I was I'm not allowed to train there because of the person I was dating at the time. Um, politic bullshit, but um. Yeah. So New England Pro Wrestling Academy is actually supposed to be an hour and a half from my house. Mm -hmm. With traffic, even though you leave at 3 o'clock and school starts at 6, you get there at like 7. So I remember I was even going to training one day and my tire blew out. Or I got stuck in the middle of the road just because I had a shitty car. Now I have no car. So that's obstacles of everyday life, of trying to pay and afford for all this stuff and training and all that stuff. But um, it's, it's definitely like you work for work in wrestling. And that was my biggest obstacle. Um, other than that, I would say I was very shy prior. But I feel like now wrestling definitely has gotten me out of my shell and that's an obstacle I've overcome and you make a lot of friends and just talking and communicating with people like I would go to shows that I'm not even booked on and just have fun and talk to people and they don't know who you are and be like listen I'm training and that'll get you booked and that'll get you places so there's always different obstacles and no matter how long you've been in the business there's still going to be an obstacle wrestling is changing all the time and it's different and there's new people coming in that want to be booked and you're not booked or Right now, in my career right now, I would say my obstacle is I'm trying to move so I can go train at ROH full time. Um, so my obstacle right now, I would say, is figuring out life so that I can make wrestling work full time. Awesome. Last time I saw you in the ring, you were facing off with uh, Faye Jackson. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really getting in the ring with her. Uh, she's awesome to work with, to be honest with you. She was very... Uh, easy she liked to um a lot of her moves uh, i've taken before so it was easy for me to she was like yeah i do the booty bump thing and i feel like a lot of girls with big booties like to do that move which is fine which is fine and i don't mind taking it but she was she did that cannonball into the corner which is awesome 
she was awesome to work with. I mean, I wouldn't mind working with her again for the short time she's been working. She was, she was really good. So. And also, you've done some manager work. You've done some in-ring work. What do you prefer better? Is it just you just like both? Uh, manager has actually gotten me experience in the ring. So when I first started managing, I was very quiet, didn't say anything. But then I came out of my shell. So now that I'm in the ring, I talk a lot of shit. I'll be the biggest heel. And if it wasn't for managing, I wouldn't know any of that stuff. Like, I would sit there and just be like, uh, just wrestle. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I'm definitely more of a character because I'm managing. So when I'm asked to manage, it's not really, oh, I'd rather wrestle. Like, everybody would rather wrestle if you're a wrestler. But managing so easy now that it, it doesn't phase me, especially since I do a lot of high spots in my shit. So... So who, um, as far as like uh, independent talent, like who are some of your favorite independent talents? And is there anybody who you like go to that like gives you good advice on you know things that you should do? Uh, well, it depends on who's at the show. Um, like today, Bull James, I would say was like the number one person I would go to. Um, he's very open and honest. That's what I would want. Honest opinion. Um, but when I'm after training or after a show and somebody's not there, I do call Matt for advice um, just because he's straight up forward and I do steal a lot of his shit even though he hates it do steal a lot of his shit so when I say hey I did this move and he's like alright this would look better you should do this um, he's helped train me a lot too he'll go to open ring with me so he kind of right now is like the number one person I'll call and be like listen this is how it went this is how it goes I have a lot of friends that I would go to that's been around that you would just call and be like oh this is how it went or I would send videos um, or if I'm at a match and I go up to the locker room and be like hey did you see my match and just see it but it's whoever really is at the show at the time that I would ask. You got to wrestle with Ashley Box. Mm -hmm. uh, how was it wrestling with her? Uh, I actually, she started around the same time I did. Even though she, I don't know where she lives now, but I know she was from Connecticut. And the first time I met her, I forget where it was. I think she went to training at New England Pro Wrestling Academy. She's grown tremendously since then. And I honestly love the match we had at 2KW, to be honest with you. It was a very easy calling match, and I felt like the transitions from move to move were great. And she was, it was just, I don't know, it just, some people you just mesh together and have a good match with. And it was just, like, when we get lost, we would just talk to each other, and it didn't look awkward, it didn't feel awkward, and I would definitely do it again with her. Like, number one person, awesome. So... Andrew, you've named a lot of people that you've had um, yeah. matches with. Uh -huh. I'm going to ask you, what's your most memorable match that you've had so far? Oh, uh, um, memorable? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say um, I had a match against um, Trip Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, and Johnny Silver, and I took my first super kick. Let me tell you, I'm never going to forget that super kick. <laughs> Oh man, that was whew. um that was definitely like the most memorable. Actually, not to cut you off, but you got proposed. Oh yeah, that's why it was so. <laughs> it was like now. yeah, that's probably why I got that super kick to the head. But are you regretting that now? Like, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, because imagine what would happen after that. What if exactly I said yes? Right, right. Oh. And <laughs> if you have him on Snapchat, you see that he does propose to a lot of women. So oh. a little play and play it. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. And kind of, uh, kind of playing off of that too. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone that you haven't wrestled yet that you want to wrestle? Like, what would be your dream? Well, match? I'm actually having a very interesting match, which I'm very excited for. Um, April eighth for um, Platinum Pro Wrestling in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Um, it's against Angel Rose, who was recently on TNA, uh, in Santana. Yeah. So I'm very excited for that. It's like a triple threat match. So yeah. yeah. At WrestlePro, you got mm -hmm. a little bit of the action with Anthony Bowens. He took a nice uh, knee to the face. Mm -hmm. How was that? I'm not gonna. I'm gonna break kayfabe right now. Like I don't care. <laughs> but um, we practiced that move prior. We practiced like what spot we should do. I always like getting in the ring. I learned how to freaking rana before I knew how to run the ropes. I was a manager before I did training. You know, like I always love to do it. So we try to think of moves to do that he could get back at me. So he was like, oh, we'll try this um, knee. And when we were trying it before, I put my hand up and I would just bump too early. So in the heat of the moment when that was happening, I was like, I'm just going to turn my face and see how it goes. And it got a bigger pop, but it didn't hurt as much as people thought it did. But it looked amazing. So I was very happy with it. So, I mean... I still look at it today and people are like, oh, you're a wrestler? Like people in my shoot job, like you're a wrestler and I'll show them that match. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, you always want that pop. I, so. was, I was there that night. Where are you? In the Rawway, yeah. And I just remember like, 
I thought you died. <laughs> like, I was like, yes. yeah, like she just started coming out with him. Like, that, that yep, yep. Like, yep. Wow. I guess that's over now. It's no, just, uh, I came out with him <laughs> after that too, but then I got kicked yeah. out because of the ring, yeah. which I thought was like made sense because you don't want the big guy to look like a small guy because I'm giving him so much move. So I thought that was a good way to get myself kicked out. But no, that knee, Bowens is an awesome dude. So that knee, he took care of me. So I can't say anything. So did you like your time at WrestlePro? Yeah. Like managing people? Yeah. Um, I was hesitant about managing again because I managed before and I kind of wanted to branch out. And when you manage, you kind of get lost in that person's gimmick. You know, their gimmick becomes your gimmick. And I was just very... Worried about that because the person I managed before that kind of happened and I still kind of run with that same gimmick, but it kind of worked and he kind of he taught me a lot of stuff. So I can't complain. Like I wouldn't, I don't regret doing it and I would do it over again. So. You've also worked with Mistress Thomas. Oh, I love her. <laughs> I guess that would answer my question. How was it working with her? Love her. <laughs> um, arguments are like kind of similar and she has blue hair and red hair. So it kind of worked coincide together and. Yeah, we still haven't had a match together. We need to do that. We had like a like a six man tag match, but it wasn't the same. So we always say like we need to have a match together, and she was just awesome to work with. She's such a sweetheart. I love her. When you so when you when you started, did you like face any challenges as far as like being a woman trying to get into professional wrestling? So when I first started, before I even ever started. People automatically was like, oh, that's his girlfriend. She's not a wrestler. Then I started training, which a lot of girls who come in this business that their boyfriend are wrestlers, they think it's going to be a one-time thing. They have one match or whatever the case is. But then I started doing it longer, and I didn't really care. And I was like, all right. And I started, people saw me traveling more, so it kind of like subsided. And people were like, oh, shit, you're actually doing it without him. And like my boyfriend at the time where I was managing, like I was getting shows without him. So it kind of helped. I mean, that was kind of my only obstacle. People really didn't think I was taking it serious because he was in it, but I never trained with him, yeah. did it on my own. I didn't want to be known as that person. So I feel like that was like my really only obstacle. When I first started, a lot of people were very welcoming and, hey, you wrestle, like come train here, come train there. I mean, you kind of did get those weirdos of like, hey, you should manage me. Hey, you want to train here? And people were like, no, that's like some backyard shit. You don't want to go there. So. <laughs> yeah. But no, a lot of people were very welcoming at first. I mean, you got a lot of those people, you're a newcomer, they're not going to take you serious. Like, who is this chick? You know, especially chicks are rare. So a lot of girls are very like, oh, who's this coming in? You know, oh, she's this one's girlfriend. But that was pretty much it. And you kind of have to eat it up and take it. And you, these people end up being your best friends at the end of the day. So it all works out. What would you What would you say to like other women that want to get into the business? Like, what advice would you give them? Oh, God. I'm terrible at giving advice. So, oh, shit. I do stuff so wrong. My only advice is don't do what I do. Don't do what I do because I've made plenty of mistakes and it's burned me in a lot of ways. Just don't do what I do. Listen to your trainer. Don't give to When I first started training, when I would fuck up in the ring at training, I would get very frustrated, start screaming, swearing. Don't do that. Take a deep breath, walk outside, take it easy. It's going to be okay. You don't get it first shot. It takes a lot of practice, and that's pretty much it. I feel like I'd be the same way. I feel like I'm so passionate about something. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of people would do that, too. Yeah. Um, so, do you keep up with Raw and SmackDown? Are you watching the women? Uh, uh, I kind of work third shift right now. So. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah, and I pick up a lot of doubles. So, TV time is not a lot for me. Yeah, I'm rarely ever home. Um, what I pick up is reading a lot of reviews and seeing a lot of clips. That's pretty much it. So, I would say, now in independent wrestling, like, um, there's a lot of, like, good, like, woman wrestlers. Yeah. Even professional wrestlers, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good woman wrestlers. What sets Helen Bell apart from all the other women wrestlers? Oh, God, that's so hard to say because I feel like my gimmick does match a lot of people's, but, um... <laughs> I feel like a lot of things that set me up from the beginning was the attitude and not the moves I hit. Like, I, I was getting bookings before people were even watching any matches or any matches even on YouTube just because of my character and the way I present myself and the toot I have as a manager. People are like, oh, shit, I kind of want her because that sets me apart, not just wrestling. So. Yeah. I know, what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, God. You should see my Pandora playlist. It's like, literally, it goes from, like, Three Days Grace to, like... Christina Aguilera okay, nice. to friggin motion emotionless and white like it's it's all over the place it makes no sense or Eminem like yeah. I you can't like I'll even listen to country music here and there like it's weird 
I have one direction in mind. So. Do you? I don't know about that. I mean, I don't know if we can be in a car ride together. Yeah, I don't know. In sync. One direction. No. In sync, I can fuck with, but I don't know about NSYNC, one direction. In sync goes hand in hand, like Christina Aguilera. Right? Yes, no, yes. Yeah. But one direction, I don't know. Yeah. So Harry, he's just so cool. And Zane left. Oh God. <laughs> Zane, yes, he's better off leaving, so it's okay. He's doing just fine by himself. I don't even know these people's names, so I don't even know what we're talking about right now. Seriously. Uh, so, can you kind of tell us uh, what's what's your ultimate goal with wrestling? Oh, a lot of people ask that, and a lot of people think like their goal WWE, awesome, good for you. Yeah. If I make it to WWE, cool, I'm not going to turn down a tryout or anything, but my goal was, my first goal was just be able to wrestle every weekend. My goal now is to make it on shows that I want to actually be on in bigger shows. I want to be the girl that people can be like, I want to wrestle her, and I want to be consistent, so I want to be every weekend, I want to make this a priority. I want to obviously make money, obviously like it would be cool to get signed, but I also want to wrestle on these big shows, and... So right now, to this day, it's just getting on shows around here that are big and not just having a show every other weekend, you know? Like, I want to be a name and I want to be people like, oh, shit, I'm having a match with Helen Vale. It's going to be so cool, you know? Like, I want to be that person right now. I don't look long-term five years. I look next month. Sure. That's my thing. I got you. Do you, do you kind of, like, um, feel like you're, like, a prominent name? In, in this area, I feel like in this area, I feel like you are. I feel like in this area more than my actual area, which is yeah. weird because a lot of people. I actually lived in Jersey for a few months and I moved back uh -huh. home, and a lot of people didn't know that. And um, I'm getting more bookings in New York and New Jersey uh -huh. and Pennsylvania than I am at home, which is fine. But a lot of people at home like know like I'm accomplishing stuff, which is fine. But there's also still shows at home like Beyond and Chaotic. I would love to return to that. I'm not wrestling full-time on that yeah. I would like to so that's the goal like I don't care who knows me because a lot of people there's social media so it's very hard not to know a lot of people yeah. so I don't want to say I was a name that people like actual wrestlers would want to work all the time because I'm still so new I'm only two and a half years in yeah. but yeah I have a fan base I would say like people know me I'm yeah. awesome I talk to my fans and stuff like that and I post a lot of bullshit on social media so you really love pizza Really love pizza. <laughs> really love pizza. Your favorite topping on pizza? Actually, I'm just pretty plain. Extra cheese. It's my thing. I'll eat if there's a pepperoni or a Charisse pizza. I don't know if you guys know what Charisse is. I'm Portuguese. I don't know the other name for Charisse, linguisa. I don't fucking know, but yeah, I just don't put pineapple on my pizza, and we'll be good. Yeah. Actually, it's pretty funny. I took him to a pizza place. Mm -hmm. It's called Nando's mm -hmm. Kitchen. Mm -hmm. They have 150 different types of pizza. It's right next Where to the Starland Ballroom. About ten minutes away from us. Oh, okay. And uh, he comes in, he gets two slices of plain pizza, and I'm like, "Yeah, worse though." Yeah, they got macaroni. Yeah, pizza, I feel like you. Peanut butter and jelly. Pizza. Ooh, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> not, but there's no sauce. It's just peanut butter and jelly. I'm like, oh, no. "That's not pizza, then." I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. I, I guess. I don't know. People think I'm just <laughs> obsessed with pizza. I eat pizza every day, which is not true. I'll probably eat more donuts in a day. Like, okay. see, when he brought me to a donut shop, I forget where it is. It might be in like Freehold. Literally the best donuts ever. Like every single donut, no to man. I don't know. They have like cookie dough and they have like Oreos. Oh my god! Like I'll go to those places and like bagel places. Like people think I just go pizza all the time. It's not true. Like I'm a fatty. I'll eat anything, especially dessert. Like cake, cupcakes, my thing. So. Been to Melissa's cupcakes in the city? No, I'm not from here. So. You have to come down. Go to the I know. There's some great shops. There's one shop that mm. you would probably love. Mm -hmm. It's a donut shop. But it's kind of like they put weird stuff in it. Uh -huh. So it's like donuts with like fruity pebbles in them. It's like crazy stuff. It's like it's like all donuts are my <laughs> thing. Like if I lived with a few people when I was down here because I bounced around a lot, and they always knew they went out and got food to bring back a donut for me because oh, I just love donuts so much. Glazed donuts are my thing. Did you watch cupcake wars? I used to, yeah. but it's like once you watch one, you'll watch them all. Yeah, because the people who won, like in the first one, uh -huh. they opened up a cupcake shop uh -huh. uh, in uh, where I live. Uh -huh. uh, Which is where? Uh, I, I live in Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, what's the name? Oh, cup, cup, cupcake house. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, they're, they're opening up like three or four different locations now. But it's like wow, they, these famous people are just opening up in my own town. <laughs> yes, I just love cupcakes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so. So what's your, what's your your goal for this, this thing small? What's your goal for this year? This year? year? I'm trying to move to Bristol to train full-time at ROH. Okay. That's number one goal. My okay. only focus. That's why I'm pulling a lot of doubles at work because I'm really trying to bust my ass for that. Um, then after that, get on, obviously get signed, hopefully by ROH. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, get on like a lot of women's shows that are happening and popping up. Um, yeah. 
those shows, um, get more bookings out of this area. I mean, I know I have Florida, but Cali would be amazing. Like, that would be top notch, you know? Um, yeah, and then just get on more, like, bigger, like, conventions like WrestleCon and yeah. all that like WrestleFest and all that stuff like I would love to do um, yeah just get my name more out there and travel more and you've also been called the Little Wicked Witch yes how did that come up about? well I first started my gimmick was I had my face painted and it was a living dead girl which a lot of girls do if they're gothic but that branched off to my um, the person I managed before which was the Devil's Reject he had his face painted I had the bones and all that stuff then I transitioned. I got rid of the pain or whatever. And I forgot who said it because i from Boston. They say Wicked. So um, me and Brittany Blake did um, a gimmick at Dojo Wars, which was like, uh, what was it? She did. We did like a witch gimmick. So I kind of rolled with it afterwards. And then somebody was like, oh, the lick of the Wicked Witch. You should do that because you're from Boston. So I kind of rolled with it. So I use a hashtag all the time. And I'll still use like my old hashtags. But now I'm kind of, because I have my gear on now. It has a heart. My heart is the immaculate heart that Mary, Jesus' mother, uses. So I'm kind of transitioned from little, little Wicked Witch to Mama Monster. Yeah. A lot of people say I look like Lady Gaga. So my intro music <laughs> is Lady Gaga. So <laughs> so I'm, now I'm like the witch with the mother monster. Mm. And I have my little monsters, which my lovely fans that I took from Matt. I'll love me. I'll hear this later. But <laughs> they call themselves the little monsters. So I think it's awesome that I like to transition from gimmick to gimmick. But I'm still holding on to the dark witch thing. Yeah. And I'll cast like I still want to cut more promos of like doing spells and all that stuff because it coincides. They all go together. Yeah, so true. that's funny. I was thinking about who you look like. I was like, she looks like somebody. <laughs> Everyone and said like, especially when she went on Super Bowl. <laughs> you know who you look like? I used to have bleach blonde hand. <laughs> Everyone said it, and I'm like, oh god, I know. My entry music like, is Hailstorm, Bad Romance, Lady Gaga. Like yeah. I know. <laughs> are, you, are you a big fan of her? I used to be until everyone said I look like her. So oh I was like, God. God damn it, you guys kill it, man. <laughs> right, what are, did you watch American Horror Story? Yes. That's, she's awesome. Yeah, she she's was amazing. so badass. Like, I'm really trying to do, like, a photo shoot of, like, replicating her and her, like, vampire thing. Mm, yeah. I mean, I love her. I'm not hating on it because yeah. I'm kind of stealing her shit and using <laughs> it. So I'm going to roll with it. Yeah, yeah. Imitation is more flattering. Exactly. Story. Yeah. Yeah. That would be sick to do a photo shoot like that. Yeah. So, who's helped you with your promos? Oh, I feel like my my attitude is like, it's like, I don't get into character. It's like me being able to actually finally be a bitch in my promos, you yeah. know? So, when somebody's like, oh, shoot on this person or say this about this person, I'm like, oh, right, not that hard because I can be a bitch. Um, if you actually look at a promo that was actually shot uh, at my last PWE show, I had managed, I had managed, I wrestled against Matt. We had a match, and at the end of it, we had to cut a promo. And I was straight up bitch. And I used our real life shit. And I was like, oh, yeah, you like that, baby? And I was all about it. And it's awesome. Everyone popped for it. And they're like, oh, my God, you're such a bitch. And I was like, yeah, it's real life, but nobody knows that. So it works for me. You know, I don't have to really get into character. I just kind of get into the dark stuff. Um, I watch um, I watch a lot of other people's promos, but they're all, like, loud and this is how it is, man, brother, and all that stuff. But I kind of didn't want to do that. I didn't want to sound like a wrestler. And I think my promos actually stem off of me doing acting when I was in high school and theater and all that stuff. So it was very easy for that to come about. And that was pretty much it. What shows did you do? When? Like when you were doing acting. Oh, God. I did, like, basic, like, Christmas Carol. And I did, like, Once on this Island where I played a little baby. And I was I was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I played an Annie. I didn't play Annie, though. But I played as, like, the background gimmick. So I did a lot of stuff. But when I was in... You did Annie? Yeah. When? In fifth grade, I was uh, uh, FDR. I what? Came the wheelchair, yeah. In front of my elementary school. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And I was kind of upset because everyone had like a little microphone. Yeah. And I like gave me like one that like a one you to, hold. to hold. Yeah. And I was like, I went out there and it didn't work, so I had like screen and stuff like that. So it was oh, kind God. of like yeah, I had to find my inner voice. There you go. <laughs> That's all you need. That's why you did that. <laughs> when I guess close to Christmas, you could use that as a good little red nose reindeer. <laughs> you could use that as a gift. Oh, <laughs> Do you prefer being? Uh, heel or face? Um, baby face. I can do a lot of my fancy shit. I can do all my high flying stuff. Okay. That's why I like that. Um, I get to do my shine and my comeback, which I think is pretty dope. Um, heel, I get to be more of a character. So either way, I'm comfortable with. At first, I was so scared. I remember the first time I was heel. I, it was like my debut at Chaotic. And Chaotic obviously is like a big name in New England, so I was very scared. And it was a very awkward match. So I was not feeling it. But then after a while, once you get used to it and you get your rhythm down, I mean, I still kind of do like two baby face stuff as my heel but 
it kind of works for me. So I would say babyface can do a lot more fancy shit and get a lot of more pop, but I'm comfortable doing heel stuff just as much. So. Do you and you uh you had kind of matched with men before as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. So men are awesome to work with because they can pick you up, throw you around, and you can look <laughs> awesome doing nothing. I was gonna ask you which one, which one would you prefer, fighting women no, or fighting yes, women? No, because I can do. I like I said, I like to do runners. I do head scissors and all that stuff. My, I have a submission that I go into an arm bar out of the head scissors, and a lot of girls can't take those moves, so it's just awesome that you can do that. Like I can do a DDT. Like if you watch, like I'm, well, I don't know who's gonna watch it, but um, me and Matt had a match, but I don't know if that on YouTube, and I got to do a flying DDT, and a lot of girls can't do that. Yeah. So, especially a girl my size, like, come on, like, a guy can literally just throw you around and it just looks yeah. good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'd be nervous watching that, like, don't kill her. <laughs> so, when you look around, you see, like, the women at WWE, do you have, like, any women, like, past or present that you really want to wrestle? Like, like, Trish Stratus or Lita? Or like, AJ Lee? AJ Lee? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sable? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like, number one. Because I feel like... Her gimmicks, are like, obviously our gimmicks are not the same, but her attitude with me, I feel like, are the same, and she just, she's awesome. She wrestles really good, and that would definitely be, like, the number one. And I also, I did a podcast before where they asked, like, who would you wrestle now? And it's funny, because she's here, it's Sexy Star. And I was like, yeah, I would so wrestle her, like, kind of stuck that I'm not, but... You could take her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see her You see her abs, man? Like, you kidding me? She'll kill me. I'm just going to look around, see if she's around me. <laughs> uh... So you say you want to get into ROH. Um, what are the things that you're doing right now to make you prepare for that? Train full time there. Um, I yeah. have um, their ROH uh, one of honor seminar happening. Okay. Uh, they also have um, they have like a it's like a trial thing to send to Japan. Okay. So I'm really trying to get um, as much um, gym time as I can, get my cardio up. Okay. Um, Monday, I'm going to go train at uh, NYWC and just try to get as much open ring, even any training that I can get. When I'm at home, I'll train at XWA just as much as I can to practice for that. Um, yeah, that's it. And once I'm down there, because I bounce around so much, I kind of just want to settle for one place, focus on one place just for now and see how it goes. And I feel like uh, I talk to a lot of people there. I have a little bit of friends there and they're awesome people and they were very welcoming saying like hey yeah we need girls you know come on down you know and i heard from the guys like how awesome it is and they work with you very well so it's just like it's good you know so just, yeah. we need one place to settle down in so yeah, it's a you've been doing this for a while um you feel like you're a role model for women actually like, girls that come to the show um, think about that. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody should look up to me because I'm a very fucked up person. But um, when little girls come up to me, like, oh my god, I love you. You know, it's cute. And you know, you don't tell them about your past life, you know. But you're like, oh yeah, I'll sign your little your little notebook. You know, like it's fine. They don't really ask about like role models. I mean, the only thing I do not take that I don't really have. I don't want people to look up to, but I don't want people to take their shit. Is when people try to cut you out or talk shit about you. I'm very known for my rants on Facebook and I know it's not always a good thing I know like I get shit on it about it all the time but it's just growing up the way I grew up um, my mom was a very strong woman and she told me not to take shit so I'm very strong with that and just if you're feeling any sort of way don't let somebody take it like don't take it and eat it like stand up for yourself and that's that's the only thing you should really look up to me for is not taking any shit other than that um, yeah no I'm only 22 man I fuck up a lot so don't really follow in my footsteps <laughs> Yeah, that's I mean, ask me when I'm 30, and then we'll talk about doing, it. Doing, doing the rants on uh, social media, you would probably be president sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. If you think about it. Yeah, right? true. <laughs> true. I mean, I don't use Twitter like he does, so I don't know. <laughs> we can talk about that. <laughs> so, how do you how do you like manage like training, wrestling, and living like real life? I don't like, really have a real life, life anymore. Or before wrestling, been, well, before wrestling, it was I just. I felt like I wasn't. There was something that I wasn't doing that I should be doing, and now that I'm wrestling, I'm literally just working, so I can save up, move, so I can wrestle. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to make wrestling a full time thing. So when I'm free, I go to wrestling shows, or when I'm free, I'll go to work to save up so I can wrestle more. So it's not like I go out and I'm like, oh hey girl, you want to go to the club? I'm like no, like my free time is like going to shows I'm not booked on and hanging out with people or seeing wrestling and all that stuff. Like I don't really feel like I have a life outside of wrestling. And when I don't have shows, I'm very depressed. I'm like, oh god, what do I do? I'll just stay home because I don't like. It's just weird going out and not mm -hmm. talking about wrestling, and especially with people who don't understand wrestling. It's very hard. 
Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> leave a comment. Should should. <laughs> so, so you, you, you actually like check out like independent shows? You actually watch? Yeah. Like, like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Awesome. So like, Helen, Helen, how was it? Where can people find you on Twitter? God, Twitter. I think Twitter is like Little Wicked Helen, but L I L. And then Instagram now is Mama Monster or Mama Something Monster. I don't know. I'm, I changed it, so I'm confused now. But you can just type in Helen Vale and also Helen Vale on Facebook. And that's pretty much it. I don't know what anybody else has. I don't have a Tinder, so if y'all find me on Tinder, I know I had some fan make a weird ass fetish site of me. That's not me. <laughs> so it's just literally Twitter. Oh, I have Snapchat, but. Don't add me on Snapchat. I hate it. Um, that's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I mean, add me on Instagram. That's my main shit. Don't add me on Facebook because I'm going way too much rants. So you don't want to see that shit. That's funny. See, now that you said that, now, now I do have another question. All right. I know you had some weird situations. Uh-huh. Like, what's the weirdest thing a fan has, like, done besides, make, like, the weird site for you? <laughs> Or do you even get those situations? No, I'll get like weird ass messages, but I don't even reply them. I just get weird shit from like workers sometimes. Yeah. That's the shit I'll rant about because fans don't know better and they're they're just fans. You can't yeah. really get mad about them. The fans that get really aggressive, you just block. It's not that yeah. hard. Yeah. But the fans that want to try to cuss you out, then it's like, all right, motherfucker, you're like listen up. Like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like I just I I've never met a fan out of like a show that's disrespecting me or anything. Like, not that I can remember. I don't know. Shit doesn't phase me that much, sure. and I kind of get over it. I I don't. Yeah, no. Like no, I mean, I've had a current situation that I had to go on a rant, but it was a worker that tried to cuss me out, and I just had to put him in his place, and he knows better, so. Motherfucker better listen up, so. He knows who he is. I don't care. That's funny. You're, you're probably my favorite guest we've got. <laughs> I told you I'm very blunt. I'm not going to sit here and just talk about shows. It's like, no, I'll tell you what real life shit. <laughs> That's funny. Do you, have, do you have anything, like, uh, coming up that I, you think of? That April 8th show I was really excited about, and against Santana and Angel Rose like whoo last time I wrestled Angel Rose and I'm taking a um a her Karana for the first time and I was kind of nervous she's like yeah I just her Karana I want to take it I'm like oh god I'm so little but I made it work so I was like holy shit so I'm very excited to do that again especially against Santana that's awesome awesome thank you so much Emma, for taking the time out and talking to us of course come see you at all the shows yes well, we're actually at a show She's going to wrestle. We're talking to her before the show. She's actually going to win tonight. SWF. <laughs> yes. She's going to win. I hope she will. Still winning. Still winning. <laughs> it's not one joke in the real world. talking about. We're just still champion. Sure, we might have to yeah. buy a shot after her. <laughs> it's funny. But thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Make sure you check us out. WrestlingIQ101.com. Twitter, Instagram, WrestlingIQ101. And make sure you like, subscribe, share, do all that great stuff. And we are out. Awesome.